Helen, in trying to discern uh, the capacity of evolutionary biology, I like to look for very interesting explications of what could happen. And you've worked on uh, the evolution of uh, numerical cognition and what that um, might imply about uh, um, mathematical realism versus anti-realism. So here's the potential not saying it really works, a potential for evolutionary biology to make deep analysis of abstract objects. <laughs> so I started out actually as a, an undergraduate in archaeology, and I did my first PhD in archaeology and art sciences. And one of the things I was really interested in is numerical cognition. So when you look at like, I think it all started when I went to uh, to a museum in Brussels, the Natural History Museum, and it had this tiny bone, like it's this big, and it has notches on the mm. forehands, and it was found in Ishango uh, in Congo. Uh, and the, the notches are super interesting because they sort of add up to 60 on each of the sides, mm. and they have like prime numbers, and the bone is 30,000 years old. Mm. And that's just mind blowing. Mm. Right, this object is so unique. But you see actually objects like that not quite as spectacular as the Ishango bone all around. And so I was thinking, mathematics is not something new. Like it's not that sort of like the ancient Greeks came up with it. No, mathematical cognition is really ancient. And then uh, I, I got all this, uh, this uh, scientific studies that, that showed that, that animals, in fact, have numerical cognition. So why do they have numerical cognition? I think here is where um, evolutionary theory can actually shed light on the nature of mathematical reality itself. Mm. Yes. That's a big claim. <laughs> That's a big claim. <laughs> so if you look at uh, all these studies about animal numerical cognition, then there are two interesting things. On the one hand, animals, and I just don't mean like dogs and cats and dolphins and you know, but also bees and ants. So these are like creatures with really tiny brains, really tiny brains. There's still, there's not that many neurons, but there's mm. apparently neurons that are devoted to sort of distinguishing one from two and three. Mm. So they, they've trained like bees to find sort of like if every third flower has nectar and they, they will... They will do that. So, so they and you, you can change the spatial arrangement of the flowers. So it's really the numbers they're really counting. Mm. On so that's the one thing. So that's what is called subitization. It's knowing about really small quantities and exactly distinguishing them. Now you know that once the numbers get a bit bigger, you can't do that anymore. Like we can't do that. Like you have to start counting. Mm -hmm. But we can still sort of estimate. We make we make estimations and comparisons. And that's another thing that animals can do. So what are they looking at? What are they latching onto? And my claim is that the best explanation for this is that they are responding to structural features of the environment. And actually, a discussion in mathematics is whether numbers are real. Mm, so, big like, discussion. yes, <laughs> our numbers. Our real. <laughs> yes, it's a great, it's a great discussion. Like the number two. Like, are there only like two bicycles and mm -hmm. two, right. you know, two computers? Particulars, or is there a universal? Or is there a universal? And one view is a mathematical Platonism, and Platonism is the idea that mathematical structures exist independently mm -hmm. of our minds. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if we all drop dead, then there would still be numbers. Whereas other views, such as mathematical fictionalism, uh, mathematical constructivism, they say that it's just a, ma a matter of you know us inventing numbers. Yeah. And it's so it's kind of a language function. It's yeah. a language function. It's like labels that we attach to things. Mm. So you see, like two chairs, or yeah. you know, one piano, and you just sort of put a label on it. But I think the fact that in all those different animal clades, like from bees to dogs to like, and they don't have to learn it, like they can already do it, mm. that they are responding to something in their environment. Mm. And those are structural features of the environment. Now there's many kinds of Platonism, uh, but the Platonism that I kind of find interesting is the idea of structural realism. So that means that certain instantiations in nature, structural instantiations, 
are the instantiations of the numbers. Mm. So like, you know, there's no platonic heaven with a number two, but you have like structural features in the environment, just like you can say, you can abstract laws of nature, you can talk about mathematical mm. laws and properties of nature. And this is, uh, is discerned because you're tracing it in an evolutionary pattern. You see it in, in, the, in, in the different uh, uh, cladistic categories. That's right, yeah. So the, the best explanation for why uh, animals have these cognitive capacities is that it's ecologically very salient. So animals have to be aware of numerical properties of their environment. So for example, if you have like two trees and one of them has more fruit than the other, you are going to forego opportunities choosing one of them. Uh, so, so you have to make a choice. And there is a really cool experiment that's been done a long time ago now where they looked at lionesses in an African uh, national park. And so they played tape recordings of roaring individuals. And then the lionesses would make decisions about whether to approach or not approach, depending mm. on how many distinct roars, so they can hear oh. how many individuals, because each roar is different, there are. And given that lionesses are really so much involved in defending their territory, mm. they're sort of like sizing up, like, how many of us are there? <laughs> Let's go and approach them or not. So it's, it's really very, very salient. Mm. Numerical features are, I think, just a deep fundamental structure of reality. That's why, you know, you see it in science. Like, we can go into that. That's a whole that's a whole separate discussion, of course. But I do think that we are latching on to real property of reality when we are talking about numbers. 